Have you ever wondered why you actually like going out for a run? Or, or perhaps you don't like going out for a run, but you still do it. Well, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the reasons why some people like to run more than others. And listen, the results are probably not gonna be that pleasing, mainly because on the surface, it looks like there's nothing we can do about it. If we don't like running, we just don't like running, but it's not all negative. So stay with me, let's get into it. Before we go any further, this is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I want to hear about your successes and I definitely want to hear about those setbacks. So drop a comment and let me know about your week of running. And at the end of this video, I will go through my week of running and you'll hear what I did two weeks after the Boston Marathon. But let's get into it because there was a study published in the Journal of Physiology and the researchers of this study speculated that the enjoyment of running could be or could partially be due to genetics. And look, I know I didn't want to say that in the introduction because I don't like hearing that something is genetics like VO2 max, right? We are genetically predispositioned to have a certain VO2 max. And though we can make little improvements with our VO2 max, like we can't make huge changes. And I find that a little disappointing, really. That's why this may be a little disappointing to some of you if you don't like running, but perhaps you're watching this video because you want to get something out of it. Maybe you want to see why I enjoy running, or perhaps I don't enjoy running as much as I I could. That's something that the study doesn't actually tell us. But let's talk about for a second how they actually found this out. And basically, they took rats and they had male rats that liked to run and they had female rats that liked to run and they had male rats that didn't like to run and they had female rats that didn't like to run. They got the male rats that liked to run and the female rats that liked to run and they got them together and made little babies that liked to run. They did the same thing with the male and female rats that don't like to run and they made little babies that don't like to run. They did that for several generations. And what they got was two different types of rats, all right? No one's surprised yet. The rats that liked to run would willingly spend hours on their little wheel going around and the other rats that didn't like to run, they would just skitter around a little bit. They may get on the wheel, but then they get right off. So basically we've got exactly what we expected. Rats that like to run, rats that don't like to run. And what they found was that certain genes in the rats that like to run and the rats that don't like to run were a little different. So in normal circumstances, in the rats that like to run, the genes that they were talking about produce proteins that force cells to grow and actually start working. So if we think of a life cycle as a cell, like a human life, you know, when you're younger, you're a teen, you just wanna sit around and play video games, maybe get out, hang out with your friends. But then when you get older, you think, ah, oh, it's time to take care of business. I've gotta take care of my family. I've gotta have responsibilities. The rats that like to run have genes that created the proteins that encourage the cells to start working. Whereas the rats that didn't like to run, they did not have such an advantage. And this was seen in the nuclear accumbens, which is involved in reward processing. And basically the nucleus accumbens lights up when we do things that we enjoy. And ultimately the difference between the rats that like to run and the rats that don't like to run was seen in the more mature neurons being in the rats that like to run compared with the rats that don't like to run. So the rats that like to run, the neurons grew up. The rats that didn't like to run, their neurons didn't. So remember, when we're talking about neurons growing up and doing certain things and getting to work, it's not necessarily a good thing that the rats that like to run have more mature neurons and the rats that don't like to run. It's just different. The only benefits with the rats that like to run are actually if they are allowed to run. If you're just a normal run of the mill rat doing rat things, maybe you don't care if you're a runner or not. Like it really doesn't matter in the life of a normal rat, just like it doesn't matter in the life of a normal person. But ultimately what I'm saying is the rats that like to run, they actually like to run because they're getting rewarded for doing so. Whereas the rats that don't like to run, they are not getting rewarded in the same way or to the same extent. Now, I understand this is gonna be quite disheartening if you're a runner or you wanna be a runner, but you just don't enjoy it. But here's the thing, there was a second part to this experiment. The researchers took those two different types of rats, the rats that didn't like to run, the rats that liked to run, they put them both on wheels, made them run. Now, after six days in this experiment where they were made to run, the rats that didn't like to run had knocked out about three and a half kilometers. That's pretty good. And the rats that liked to run had knocked out around 34 kilometers. So that's really good. So clearly there is a big difference. The rats that don't like to run ran about 10% of the total that the rats that like to run. But here's the fascinating and very positive thing. Those rats that were made to run and that only ran three and a half kilometers over six days, their brains were starting to change when compared to other sedentary rats that were not made to run. Those sedentary rats that were made to run actually showed more mature neurons in their nucleus acubens than the sedentary rats that were not made to to run. So I guess the lesson is, if you don't like to run, start running and you will like to run. I know, that's a stretch. It's a stretch bringing it from rats to humans. But look, if you don't like running and you're looking for a little motivation, a little encouragement, just know that you are probably changing your brain every time you go out for a run. And each time you go out for that run, you are enjoying it just 
a little bit more. And I'm sure this is most of us. When we start running, we don't like running as much as we do once we get better at it or get used to it or develop our form and become more efficient, right? It seems like a natural progression. When you get better at something, you tend to like it just a little bit more. And one more benefit if you really don't like running. And you know what? I'm reminded of one more benefit for those of you that perhaps don't like running now, I think there was a there was a Strava study back in 2000 that identified five different types of runners. There were passionate runners, invested runners, fitness runners, mindful runners, and reluctant runners. And get this, the reluctant runners were the biggest group of all. And reluctant runners are those people that rarely compete in races, they usually run alone, and they generally perceive the fewest benefits from running from all the other groups. So look, if you are out there, you're taking care of business, even though you don't like it, just know that there are a lot of people out there in the same boat. And each time you do it, it's getting just a little bit easier. I hope that's the way. I'm still hoping for me too. I'm hoping that every time I go out, I enjoy it just a little bit more. That would really be nice. But I kind of experience that with every single run I do. I don't really like it in the beginning. That first mile or two is usually pretty miserable. I'm usually not enjoying it at all. And then by the end, I'm feeling pretty good and I'm actually having a good time. And with that, I had a pretty good week of running. It was my second week after the Boston Marathon, so I'm slowly coming back. My legs are feeling a little bit better. And if I'm honest, the week went pretty well because all I did was easy runs. It started off on Monday with 7.1 miles, very easy, but I did go over and I ran on some trails, which is always a lot of fun. Now, this was probably my hardest run of the week because there was a lot of ups and downs on these trails that I was running, but it was still a fairly easy effort. Tuesday was 8.2 miles, very easy, really nothing to say about that run. Wednesday was my day off this week. Thursday was 7.3 miles, super easy. On Friday, I ran 10 miles easy. On Saturday, I also ran 10 miles easy. And then I wrapped up the week with 8.5 miles, very easy. Now, on Sunday, there was a tornado watch when I went out for my run, so that was a little exciting, or it had the potential to be exciting if I saw a tornado but I did, so it was just a normal easy run. And that brought my week's total to 52.17 miles, which is about 82.35 kilometers. So all in all, pretty good week. I was definitely feeling better at the end of the week than I was at the beginning of the week, but that is probably to be expected too. And because of my run on Sunday being during a tornado watch, if you have made it to this point in the video, why don't you let me know by dropping the tornado emoji in the comments. And of course, don't forget to let me know about your week of running. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.